<coughs> Hello everybody, DK here from Dwarf King Headquarters and welcome to today's review. As you can see when you see my Merlin or my um, Noble Knight playmat, you know we're going to be doing a Yu-Gi-Oh! review, not just any review. We're going to be reviewing over a few new cards I added into my deck. Um, the deck that I've been playing is of course very, very, the deck that I play is pretty powerful if I get out the cards at the right time. And, um, yes, so we're going to be reviewing over the cards, and then we're going to be reviewing over my warrior deck later on. But, first card I want to review is Pyramid of Light. It is a promo, since it says limited edition. Let's zoom up a little. Of course, it doesn't want to zoom. But, this is what the effect is. If this card is face-up, is removed from your side of the field, destroy Andro Sphinx and Sphinx Talea on your side of the field to the... From play, so it's kind of a bit of an iffy card if you think about it. When you play Pyramid of Revealing Light on your turn, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm still sick, but um, you're probably thinking, well, can I activate it during my turn? Well, not really. You can only activate it during your next turn, unless if it, unless if the attribute here, not the attribute, the thing here says is basically quick play or like an arrow pointing. So then, then again, if you think about it, when you play Pyramid of Revealing Light during your next turn. Let me see where it is, because when you play Pyramid of Revealing Light, then you activate it, of course. You could pay, like, 500 life points. And the only one who you can bring out during that turn is Andro Sphinx. Now, what I like about it is Andro Sphinx's ability is not too bad. Special summon it when Pyramid of Revealing Light's on the field. You only have to pay 500 for a 3,000 attack level 10 monster. I mean, good grief, that's good. It cannot attack during turns normal summon. So, basically, when you normal summon it, it basically is kind of frozen. Or special summon. This card cannot be special summoned from the graveyard. So if you try using um, the Call of the Haunted on it, that really wouldn't work. If this card destroys a defense position monster as a result in battle, infect damage to your opponent's life points equal to half the attack. Okay, so that's not so bad. So if there's a 4,000 monster and you make this thing 5,000 and then you attack it, they'll only take 2,000. So it's not a bad card. I'm going to set the cards I reviewed up there. And then say you still have Andro Sphinx out on the field. Well, as long as you have him out and pure middle of light out, you can bring out the almighty Sphinx Talaya. Mmm, Sphinx. Now what's interesting about this card is its attack is lower than its defense, which surprises me even though it's a level 10. And if you look at Andro Sphinx, his attack is 3,000, defense 3,000, where hers is 2,500. So she dropped down 5,500 life points. But basically, the good thing about her is equal to half the defense. So instead of half the attack, it's going to be half the defense. Not too bad for Sphinx to Leia. Of course, these cards were added to my deck because I had to add them. I'm not going to be playing this deck in tournament. Heck no, because that's not a good idea. Because most of the cards are in here are forbidden to play in tournament play. But in standard play, I played to see what my friends think. Then we got the almighty Theonane, the Great Sphinx, level 10. 3,500, that's good. But then when you... You can only be paying 500 life points when Andro Sphinx are on your side of the field. They're destroyed at the same time. So say you attack with both of them, and then someone activates Mirror Force while they're gone. Then you could bring this big bad boy out. I mean, look how big he is. He is huge. He's like a... He's like a... What is it? He's like a Manticore. No, he's like a... Yeah, kind of like a Manticore. But then if you think about it with his attack, basically what happens is... You can pay 500 life points and increase his attack by 3,000. So technically that makes out a 6,500... 3,000 defense. Oh, come on, camera. Please focus for me. My camera is not wanting to do well until the end phase. So when you want to attack with him for 6,500 and you equip, you know, the bow shooting star bow seal to him, it goes down to 5,500. But the good news about bow seal, shooting star bow seal, is that he can attack your opponent directly. So kind of like a tomb card, but in Egyptian times. Then we'll review another good card I added to my deck. None other than the forbidden card Marek uses in his deck. Raigeki, the gold version. Now you're probably wondering, where did you get this? That's a good question. I opened it from none other than, let me see if I can grab it from here, none other than a premium gold opening. I did an opening and popped this out, surprisingly. I wish there was a Lavaval chain in there, but I will probably be doing another premium gold sooner or later. The good news about Raigeki is that you can destroy all monsters your opponent controls. That obviously is the, one of the biggest cheat big cheat cards right there. It's like summoning out Jinzo with his ability. It's just most annoying. But with Raigeki, since it's considered a spell card, you could play that as long as your opponent does not have Dark Bribe. If they have Dark Bribe, you're technically screwed. So when you think about Raigeki and you play it, your opponent is screwed. So a very fun card to play. Then if we go into the next card, 
the newest Elemental Hero I added, because mine's mostly a Warrior Hero deck, we got Elemental Hero Great Tornado from, I believe, Legendary Collection to the Dual Academy years. The good news about this card is you can bring one Elemental Hero monster, such as Neos Alias or any of the other ones, and then a Wind Monster, like Harpy Lady. And then you could Fusion Summon it, and then when it's Fusion Summon, half the attack and defense of all face-up monsters your opponent controls. So if you think about it, if they have monsters with 1,000 attack and 1,000 defense, you can basically lower it down to 500. A pretty good card to use. Then you could basically attack them as long as they don't control Mirror Force. So that's a good card that I added into it. And now we're going to be reviewing one of my... No, excuse me. <coughs> Second favorite XC's monsters, Castell. From the tin I opened of the, oh, what is it, Dark Rebellion XE Dragon tin. It was a very fun opening. I did get a new number card. Well, two new number cards. Good news with Castell is he is a bird with a flintlock, which is obviously pretty cool. And the attack 2000, defense 1500, limited edition, which is pretty interesting. Two level four, you can detach one XE's material and target one face up monster on the field and change it to face down defense. So if your opponent has a big monster out with like 3000, you can detach one XE's material from this card and make it, of course, go like that. So then technically that monster would not be able to change until their next turn. The good news about it is, see, if you detach two XE's material monsters from it, you can choose one monster, if I remember, one monster card on the feet, one other face up card on the field and shuffle it into the deck. Like if you do the face down one and then say you have overlay un region on it and basically that has two, that adds one. So then you would have two left. You could do it next, you could actually, I, I believe you can detach it during your turn, no wait, next turn, and then what you can do is when you do that, basically it would send the card back to the deck. So Castell is actually a very good monster to use in this deck. I'm talking really fast and I'm pretty happy about that. Then we're going to activate and talk about one of my favorite, uh, s well not favorite, second favorite, Trap cards, the Deck Devastation Virus. Good news about this is it looks like someone caught Ebola on this card. If you look about it, if you look at it, it has a Japanese symbol. Can anybody out there tell me what that Japanese symbol means? Because that would be pretty interesting. Deck Devastation Virus, it's a trap card, and believe me, it is quite forbidden. You can tribute one Dark Monster with an attack of 2,000 points or more, like Dark Lord Edo Ere. Good grief, this camera is not what you would call very friendly. Come on. Opponent's side of the field, your opponent's hand, and all cards he or she draws. So you can basically, it's like you look over their hand and what they drew and what they put down for the next three turns. So that's what you would, it's like if you think about a virus going into a computer, it just screws up everything. Like this card, De Deck Devastation Virus, it screws up their deck. Not too bad for a card. Then I'm going to bring out another one of my favorite monsters, Teva. He looks like a monk that you would see all the way in Siberia or any other place. Well, good news about Teva is he's only a level 5, so you can, like, tribute one monster, bring him out, not too shabby. When he is tribute summoned successfully, your opponent cannot declare attack during his or her next turn. The good news is it's like Utopia's effect where it uh, prevents all combat damage from happening. But with Teva, when you bring him out, your opponent cannot attack, period, which is a good thing, if he, especially if he controls a tune deck. And then we got one of the newest cards that I added. He's a very annoying card. He is Ravia, the Lord of Phantasms. I believe that is level 10. If you look at him, he looks like something. He looks like a, what is it? A He looks like a summoned skull, but this time in a darker version. And then if you think about it, he is limited edition from, pre, from the Dual Academy years. 4,000, 4,000. He must be special summoned by tributing three fiend-type monsters. So say you have three fiend-type monsters. You can tribute all of them. Boom, bring them out. He is pretty darn deadly. Each time your opponent special normal summons a monster, you can special summon a phantom token. So like say if he normal summons, like what would you think, Gagaga -ga -ga Magician? You could special summon out a creepy, creepy token, which is quite annoying. And if you think about it, the tokens are actually pretty cool. They're attack 1000, defense 1000, level 1, so it's interesting that they're level 1. Each monster summoned, these tokens cannot declare an attack. That's pretty interesting. Once per turn, you can tribute one monster. This card gains attack equal to the original attack of the tribute monster until the end phase. So it's kind of like Thane the Great Sphinxes, where you pay life points, but instead with this one, you are able to... Oh, good grief. You are able to tribute one monster, and he gains that much attack. Not too bad for him. Then we have the final card of the evening, Ra Heyman, Lord of Striking Thunder. It looks like a very, 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 very creepy version of of the winged dragon of raw if you think about him as he's dead and he comes back to life the good news about him is he's 4000 attack and 4000 defense he cannot be normal summoned or set but 
must be special summoned from your hand by sending three face-up continuous spell cards, like any fire formation t fire formation cards, or like um, dimensional fissure, you know, any of those good cards. And then the interesting thing is when he destroys and sends it to the graveyard, infect 1,000 damage to your opponent. Good thing he can attack. But if he's in defense position, your opponent cannot target other monsters for attacks except for Heyman. So the good news is, is you set him down in defense mode. You're wondering what's going to happen. Your opponent tries to attack Utopia. Yeah, he can only attack Heyman. Heyman's like a attacking magnet. He draws all the attack to him, and then those monsters could basically not destroy him unless they're higher than 4,000. But technically, guys, with this video, this ends the few cards that I added into my deck. If you guys like this video and want to see some more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! reviews and openings, be sure to post a comment and slap that like button as much as you can. Let's see how many views we can get. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye!